So McDonald's is testing a chicken Big Mac. Okay. Chicken Big Mac. Is it a McChicken Big Mac or will it be a grilled chicken Big Mac? I'm not sure. My guess is that it'll be fried chicken mm-hmm. because basically it leaked that they were going to be doing this thing. And then Washington Post hit him up and was like, hey, what's going on? We hear that there might be a new Big Mac on the way. And they more or less said, we're always looking to give our fans more ways to enjoy the classic menu items they know and love. But yeah, confirmed it. I think they're missing an opportunity if they don't call it the McChicken Big Mac. (laughs) The McChicken Big Mac. The McChicken Big Mac. McChicken Big Mac. What about Big Mac McChicken? Oh, I like that too. Big Mac McChicken, McChicken Big Mac. Both those sound nice. Mm -hmm. So we shall see. So right now they're just testing it, which I don't know if that means there are like if you end up at the right McDonald's, you might be able to get a McChicken McBig Mac. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> whatever the hell it's going to be called oh dear does that i mean would that bring you are a fan of the big mac yes no no thumbs down no. yeah it's all bread and lettuce and that mac sauce no yeah i don't like the mac sauce in fact i don't know if i've ever actually had a big mac i'm just like really especially for the unfamiliar i worked at mcdonald's in high school whenever i put that sandwich together i'm like there's hardly any meat on this they use the small patties. Yeah. Quarter pounder is the way to go or a McDouble. You know, that middle bun just seems excessive. But for some people, it's, you know, it's the bee's knees, Kate. It's the bee's knees. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not a Mac sauce person, but I'm with you. Like, I would take the middle bun out and I don't mind the lettuce. Lettuce is fine. Yeah, I guess that kind of not carbo loading or anything like that with it, so... Probably. I mean, lettuce just doesn't have that much as far as nutritional value goes. It gives you that, you know, that crisp kind of texture. But and I think oftentimes we're fooling ourselves. Oh, it's got a salad on there. I'm fine. This Big Mac is healthy now. I have lettuce because I like the combination of lettuce and tomato. Like when, you, when you're when you talking yeah. like sandwiches, I do like lettuce and tomato, like the combination together with the sandwich. I guess it's not so much. Mine's more of a flavor thing than it's like, oh, it's healthy if I put lettuce on it. It's also nice to have a piece of lettuce under the patty on a burger so that your bun doesn't get all bloody, you know, especially with how I like my burgers. Bloody. I do like my burgers bloody. Uh, Have I ever ordered them that way? Uh, No, I'll say medium rare. I have not said bloody yet, except frankly, I don't even know what that means. I want to taste the rope. You want to taste the what? Rope. The rope around the cow's neck? No? Oh, I hadn't heard that one. Okay. Is that is that a thing? Is that a saying? That is a thing. That's not no. an original. Can't take can't take credit for well, it. Well, we learned something new every day on Matt and Kate. How to order steak. I would like to taste the rope, please. <laughs> Fantastic. Kate, do you ever download Netflix movies or shows to an iPad or something like that? My girls do. I have okay. not. All right, so public service announcement that the upcoming ad-supported version of Netflix, which is supposed to be out next year, won't allow you to do that. Uh Uh-oh. So get ready. kind of makes sense if you think it's probably going to the internet to be like, what ads need to be played right now? And they're like, oh, here you go, as opposed to baking it in to a downloadable version. kind of makes sense to me. Yeah, yeah. And, you, you I mean, you don't want to give the ad-supported people everything. Uh, Make them work for it. Pay a little bit extra for features don't give away the farm yeah yeah i personally (sighs) have rarely downloaded things if i'm going somewhere where there's no internet yeah but i don't have kids in a car that i'm looking to entertain over a lengthy jaunt that is that's the motivation right there that is why we've got things downloaded vacation road trip type Mm -hmm. stuff yeah Mm mm-hmm That's the way to do it. So once again, there is an ad-supported version of Netflix on the way, expected early next year, and brace yourself, you won't be able to download from the ad-supported version. Womp womp. Womp womp. Matt, school's back in session today. We. I know, right? Yeah, St. Joe's School District, a lot of, well, your kids were back last week. They were back last week, yeah. Catholic school. So, so I think everybody should be back in school starting, you know, this week. Okay, you feel like that's everybody. I, 
I believe so. Okay. That might be a broad assumption, but I was hoping we could play Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader since school's back in session. Da, 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 da. This is where you quiz me, and then it turns out I'm more like a third grader level. Of maturity, for sure. Of maturity, for sure, but maybe of knowledge <laughs> as well. I think these are... I took the quiz earlier, and I'm like, oh, Matt's going to fly through this. So okay. I have a lot of confidence in you. All right. Are we smarter than fifth graders, dear listener? Kate's going to quiz us now. All right. Who invented the light bulb in 1879? Was it Ben Franklin, Thomas Edison, or James Watt? Edison. Edison invented the light bulb. Phew. Yes. Scared. I was going to guess that without the multiple choice. Do you want to go without multiple choice for the rest of the quiz? I don't know. What do you think? I think you'd be okay, but I thought maybe for our listeners it might be good. Oh, yeah. You're right. For the listener. Yeah, yeah. All okay. Right. Who is the creator of the classic book characters Tom Sawyer and Huckleberry Finn? Ernest Hemingway, Kurt Vonnegut, or Mark Twain? That's Mark Twain. Mark Twain. Samuel Clemens. He is a Missouri native. Well done. That good, good factoid, Kate. Thanks. Yeah, anytime. In what country is the famous Taj Mahal located? Iran, Kuwait, India. India. India is correct. And <laughs> I think they're trying to throw you off because isn't Kuwait a city? No, Kuwait is there a country. country, Kuwait? Yeah, that's the one that Saddam Hussein tried to invade. Maybe I'm thinking of Kuwait City. Go <laughs> for. Mate, yeah. probably. I think there might yeah. be a Kuwait City. Okay. Animals that only eat meat are known as omnivores, herbivores, or carnivores. That's a carnivore right there. Carnivore will eat meat. Yep. I hadn't heard that pronunciation before. That's nice. Well, it's my Italian accent. Well, fantastic. Terrible. Yeah. <laughs> it's a carnivore. Okay. <laughs> that's fantastic. What are you talking about? They should have casted you as Mario for the upcoming film. <laughs> right. They can't afford me. There's been lots of hate about Chris Pratt doing it, you know, what with him not being Italian, that he's going to come up with a really offensive Mario voice. So Right. Can't wait. Can't wait. All right. Smarter than a fifth grader. So far, Matt is four for four. Your final question to go 100%. Are you smarter than a fifth grader? What species can live in water and on land? Amphibians, mammals, Tyrannosaurus. Amphibians. Amphibians for the win. Yay. Do, 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 do. So it turns out this time I am as smart as a fifth grade. Does this mean I'm sixth grade smarts at least? Is that what that means? Yeah, I okay. think so. Great. I at the very least have sixth grade intellect if we count this quiz. It's an official kind of it's official. Iowa test of basic skills or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Kate, do you ever try to give a single kudo? As opposed to kudos. <laughs> I've never thought of that. Just one kudo. Just one. No, I haven't. Yes. Yeah, so shinyredcopy.com has this graphic going around. Say no to kudo. Even though the above four letter word is wriggling its way into some dictionaries, please don't use it. Kudos means praise. Singular. It does not refer to a multitude of kudos. So I thought I should... Pass it along to the listener, and this person also posts Sarah Rosinski. Of course, we get the singular P, that's P-E-A, from the not plural P's, P-E-A-S-E. So I see where this situation is going, but for the time being, anyway, can you just indulge me and keep kudos as is? Wait, 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 wait. did you say P's is P-E-A-S-E? Yeah, so P's, P-E-A-S-E, is a word. Like to appease you? Let's look. I don't want to mess this up. Peas. I know, but like the vegetable plural. Oh, yeah. Is P E A S, right? Let's see. Well, when I search for peas, P E A S E, the first thing that pops up is peas. P E A S. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. I need more dictionary. Uh, let's go to this one here. Peas with an E on the end of it. Wow. Okay. Do you even use the word kudos? Do you ever say kudos? I don't think, I can't say 100% no, but I don't remember a time where yeah. I'm like, hey, kudos to you. Good on you, mate. No, I don't. Yeah. Yeah, that's what you say. I don't think I've used it 
often. I definitely haven't said kudo. You know what? You deserve no. a, a kudo for that. No. But isn't there a granola bar slash candy bar because it was never good for you? Kudo bars? Oh, maybe. That sounds kind of familiar. Searching for kudo images. Nope, they're called kudos. Kudo is apparently some kind of anime character also. Okay. Kudos. Maybe the kids. Do the kids get things like... I think there was a time in school growing up where you got merits, you know, as opposed to demerits. You could get merits also. Hmm. I'm not sure. Is that something that happens? Are the kids doing anything like that, Kate? I don't hear of anything of merits. Just I have heard of demerits, yeah. Your kids get in trouble yet this school year? Not yet. I know they just started, when was it, Wednesday, last Wednesday? Okay, I was afraid they were going to get in trouble for something that I did. What'd you do? Okay, maybe I should rephrase that. I was afraid they were going to get in trouble for something that I didn't do. You forgot the scissors. No. No craft scissors. Is it something like that? Is it a school supply? It's a variation of a school supply, but it's something that I have to like... Tissues. Nope. Mm. It's something that I have to like make. Oh. Mm-hmm. Was it like your duty? Was it your week to provide treats for the class or something? Nope. Brown book, book covers. paper bags. Book covers. Book covers. Yep. Darn, I almost got that out. I almost got that out before you started. I know it, it was real <sighs> I was really impressed. Ugh. All right. So close. So what happened? They were supposed to have their books covered Friday morning and I went to cover them Thursday night and we didn't have any brown paper bags. So <laughs> I was like, tell your teachers that your mom oh, is very God. sorry, but they'll get covered over the weekend. Blaming mom. I know. Do you think teachers will verify with you that that was uh, the case or not? Or have they? Knowing my children, they'll probably be like, yeah, that's true. Your mom did not have her poop in a group. Okay. They're familiar. They know you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Poop in a group. But I mean, I understand book covers. I get it. I just hate them. Hate them. Just because of the folding, you don't feel like you're good at it or what? I uh, it takes forever and you have to measure and you have to have brown paper bags. I felt like we did that didn't we do that in class? I don't know if I remember doing that. Well, hmm. I remember doing years. it at the kitchen table with my parents. Yeah. And I remember like it annoyed my dad and he was just like, move <laughs> the way that I was doing it. Yeah. So then he helped me. But I also we also had book covers in school, like they were sponsored book covers it was right. like everybody got so many book covers and you right, right. fold it yeah yeah i'm kind of yeah you could fold it inside out and have a pretty cool looking white cover instead of advertising for yes yes you know ted's mechanic or what? yep bob socks bob socks thank you that's our go-to mm-hmm. made up advertiser bob socks been funny had you wrapped them <laughs> and you wrapped the books in plastic grocery bags instead i know there you go Sorry, we take plastic. Yeah. And you can't, they also say no soft covers. So you can't go onto Amazon and buy book covers. Or make a fabric one or. Yeah. I didn't know you could get pre-made ones like that. Mm -hmm. You have to, I guess, measure your books. They're like a stretchy material. Okay. Yeah. So it's supposed to fit books of all sizes, but nope. I was at the kitchen table last night. Cutting brown paper bags. So what does one do? I guess you just go to, I don't know, like a party place and get a bunch of brown paper? No, nope. I, uh, I went to the grocery store? store and I asked for brown paper bags. And um, I asked, I, <laughs> I called a family member. Hey, you got any brown paper bags? And picked up about six from my aunt and... Wait, so you got some from the grocery store or you didn't? Yeah. No, I did. But it wasn't enough? You needed more from... Right. Because you didn't want to be like, give me 10. Right. Paper bags. I also got my, gro- I got my groceries in them. I wasn't just like, hey, give me your brown paper bags. Oh, okay. Yeah. I don't know if I've even... Hmm. You, you really have to go out of your way to ask for it, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Paper or plastic. They don't really say that anymore. Yeah. Or if they say, they'll say, like, is plastic okay? And then you're like, actually, can I get them in brown bags, please? Paper. Thank you. Paper is great. Yeah. Yeah. 
I try to keep them. If I get a brown paper bag, I try to keep it folded up, tuck it away. You never know, right? Yeah. But the Chipotle bags are not big enough for my textbooks. So Hmm. those are the brown paper bags that I have in my pantry. Yeah, I've got a bunch of those too. Yep. They're good. Mm. Mm Mm-hmm. Now I'm getting hungry for some Chipotle and maybe do some algebra or something at the same time. Weird. Mm. It's a weird hankering. You keep the algebra. I'll keep the Chipotle. Yeah. Do you think Mariah Carey is the, quote, queen of Christmas, Kate? You know what? Yeah. I do not. I think this is a broad title. Yes. For women. Good point, Kate. Ah, oh, get you, you it. Get it? Broad. Broad. Okay. Which is okay. kind of a dismissive, mean term, though, isn't it? Yeah, it's not good. Okay. So, and now I just remembered UHF, the Weird Al movie. Where the engineer goes, no broads in broadcasting. <laughs> to Fran Drescher's character. All right, so I bring uh, up this Mariah, <laughs> this Mariah Carey deal because she wants to trademark Queen of Christmas and then, you know, sell various merch based on that. And in her lawsuit, where she's trying to file this patent, I should say, in her statement to try to acquire this patent, she said she deserves this trademark because... An article in Billboard, a 2021 Billboard article, called her the undisputed Queen of Christmas, Kate. I think that was uh, real generous there, Billboard. Yeah. So two other singers, Elizabeth Chan and Darlene Love, are the ones that are objecting to this idea of Mariah Carey being, quote, Queen of Christmas. One we've heard of and one we haven't. <laughs> okay, I thought maybe I was had a blind spot there. So Darlene Love... Right. As a classic that plays at least one every year, Christmas time. At I forget which one. Once an hour. Which one? You it's, know? Uh, yes, I can sing it. Um, oh, the listener wants to hear you sing. Uh, shh. Baby, please come home. Right? Maybe. What happened to you singing? I thought you were. They're singing deck the halls. But it's not like Christmas at all. Baby, Christmas, pl- baby, please come home. Okay, there it is. Yeah, I had to, I remember when you were here. Very pretty. And all the fun we had last year, Christmas. Yeah. Well, it turns out that Kate is the real queen of Christmas. Yeah. Uh-huh, uh-huh. I just, okay, Elvis is the king of rock and roll. Uh-huh. Not because he had one song that plays <laughs> once a year. Oh, here we go. Yeah. So, I know that Mariah Carey has a Christmas album, yeah. but we don't bang the Mariah Carey Oh Holy Night drum like we bang the All I Want for Christmas is You drum. So, I don't think that makes you the queen of Christmas. And Darlene Love, what did she say? She said, David Letterman called me that in 1980-something, so okay. that's way before Billboard magazine called you it's like Billboard magazine or like any time a phrase is written about you in a publication that now magically you are that when it comes to copyright and such. So, right. What a bunch of baloney. Get out of here, Mariah Carey. Very good you point, know, Kate. I hadn't thought about that. Like, okay, where are your other Christmas hits? I mean, we know you have an album, but... Like Amy Grant has more Christmas hits, I think, than Mariah Carey does. Whoa. Not to... I didn't mean to are throw shade. Are you sure? I didn't mean to throw shade at Amy Grant. Probably. I don't think that was throwing shade. Okay. I think so. Will you disagree? Immigrant? Uh, I don't know. Okay. Well, this is going to this gonna take some research. We're going to have to right? cross-reference billboard charts since the year, I don't know, 1986. Do some math and come back to you on that. If you have a Christmas album, does that make you the queen of Christmas? Because we're talking Faith Hill. We're talking Celine Dion. We're talking... <laughs> what did you just try to do to Celine Dion's name? Celine Dion. She's French. Okay. Yeah. Uh, wow. All right. Thanks. Um, who else that. has Christmas albums that I love? Oh, Kelly Clarkson. Yeah. Martina McBride. Just thinking of all the Christmas music that I usually listen to. Bare Naked Ladies. Sarah McLaughlin. It's been one week since Christmas time and now it's New Year's. Something like that. Yes, that's exactly how it goes. Okay, so I thought 
Nailed it. Kate, Airbnb is rolling out new, quote, anti-party technology in North America. Oh. Sounds like they're a bunch of buzzkill, huh? The way that, and they're the ones that phrased it that way. Anti-party or anti-party technology. Lame. So here's what they do. They look at factors like a guest's review history, the age of their account, the length of the stay they're requesting, and whether they're booking for a weekend or a weekday. They said they've been testing this in Australia for the last year, and a 35% drop in unauthorized parties occurred. Sounds like discrimination. Yeah, they do focus on younger people. <laughs> they, do, they do focus on younger people as part of their algorithm, their anti-party technology. You're denying that. me stay because I'm right. 21 on the day that I want to stay at right. your place. Well, the other thing is this one makes sense. So you would have your home address entered into Airbnb, right? Yeah. For, not if you're renting it, but as a consumer of going to someone else's Airbnb, you've got to have those details in your own account. And so if you book a house that's like a mile from the house you live at, watch out. The anti-party technology might get you. Party police? Is that what we're going to call them? Airbnb, party police. Yeah. Sure. N- or narcs, snark. Fun haters. I guess narcs not right because they're not calling the cops on your party. They're just preventing you from doing it in the first place. Party poopers. Okay. Party poopers. Airbnb. I don't know. Yeah. Let's go with it. Dating apps. Kate Bumble, right? Bumble. Right, right. They're now experimenting with both a BFF feature and a Hive feature. So instead of looking for love, you may be looking for a friend or a group of friends in a community. Is this really something that we want in our dating apps? I don't know. I don't know, but it's in a dating app. And so when you said Hive, it made me think once again, Kate in the gutter, that it was looking for possibly more than a match. Oh, I see ya. Well, uh, Come to the hive. Wink, wink. Little, Bring uh, all your bees. Right, a little threesome, foursome, fivesome, maybe a ten people. I don't know. Hivesome. Hivesome. Hive. Yeah. Oh. Like the hive. The hive. Yeah. So, I don't know. It's just seemed weird to me. Like This app is doing... It's like, hey, you know what? We're not making enough money, so we're going to start wedging a bunch of more features in there. I think if you're looking for friends, I think it's brave. I belong to a mom's group on Facebook in the area and it's like, hey, I don't get out as much and I've got little kids and we just moved to the area and I need to meet friend. I need to meet people and have friends. I'm like, that is bold. Yeah. To yeah. come out there and be like, let's be friends because then you can't do like the vetting process of being like, well, now they have all of my information and <laughs> where yeah. if you just meet someone randomly at the park. Okay, have a great day. Right. Have a great life. Later. <laughs> Peace. So this will have, they're thinking group chat, polls, video calls. It doesn't say here whether you would swipe right or whatever left to approve or disapprove of a potential friend. I'm like, yeah. I'm sorry, I can't have ugly friends. Swipe. Right? Doesn't that sound kind of disheartening? Like, oof, look at this one. Not in the friend group. But isn't that true? Don't hot people typically be friends with hot people and ugly people settle to be friends with other, you know, other ugly people? <laughs> Is that a little bit too harsh? I think that I'm the charity case in my friend group then. <laughs> oh, yeah? Yeah. Check out the hot friends on Kate. Damn. I got some hot friends. Ooh. The listeners want to see photos. Kate, can you put those on the Matt and Kate Facebook? Sure. Sure. The big, oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> You're going to put hot, photos of your hot friends on Facebook. Not the hot one. Are you lying or are you actually going to put photos of your hot friends on Facebook? I don't. I probably should clear that with them. Okay. Hey, are you ladies okay if I post a picture of us out one night in our 20s and they can be like, yes. Oh. For n- real. We are the hot ones. I was talking about like current hot friends. Are they not hot anymore? They're definitely still hotter than me, so okay. let's... Uh. Oh, all right. Damn, Kate. Yikes. <laughs> Hang out with the hot girls. I think you're, you're just underselling yourself right now. Oh, you're, you're being nice. You're being humble. Nice try, Kate. Kate knows nice she's hot, everybody. Try. Dear listener, Kate knows she's hot. She just doesn't want to come out and say it. That is 
Not true. Not true. So if your hot friends don't approve, Kate, just you can just send me those photos direct. That's okay, fine. okay. There you go. You know, they don't have to go on our Facebook. Thanks. <laughs> So, Kate, last week we were talking about whether to move December birthdays to June, basically celebrate the half birthday instead. That way the kids get their presents spread out more. Yep. And we posed the question to the Matt and Kate Facebook, and we got some feedback. We got some feedback. All right. What we got? Loyal listener Glenna said she always felt bad for her son because his birthday was right around New Year's. And she always felt exhausted after the holidays, and his celebrations were always a little lacking. But she doesn't know about waiting six months, though, to celebrate a birthday. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't, have you had this conversation with your kid yet? I have. Okay. We talked about it over the weekend, and she said that she would be okay with it. And I said, well, what if we started this year so you wouldn't get birthday presents on your birthday Eek. like you would just have christmas but you wouldn't get presents we'd sing happy birthday to you and, and maybe do a cake and treat it like your half birthday but then in june we would do birthday celebration yeah how'd that go over she was on board wow she was on board now she will be 13 at her next birthday so you know she's allowed to change her mind and Four months, but she was on board because she thinks her birthday gets lost in the shuffle of Christmas. So fun! Wow. I know. I was expecting uh, now, but we'll see. I mean, you're only going to find out once it's a reality, right? Right, right. If she really meant it or not? Who can't wait? The suspense. It's it's also on our brain because we just had Brennan Family Fun Day where we celebrated February through July. Like birthdays. So there was only three people who didn't get birthday presents and she was one of them. And she always gets her birthday presents when we celebrate Christmas. So everybody else gets presents when we celebrate her birthday. So I was like, okay, we either need to wait until we celebrate February to lump her in. Yeah. It's hurt my brain. I know. I know. It's my life, Matt. My life. And her feelings. So I want to make sure that she feels... It's my life. Oh, and also her feelings. And her feelings. (laughs) And her precious little heart. So considerate. 